Hey guys, welcome back. We are in Durango, Colorado at Soundtracks World Headquarters. We're gonna go inside, show you guys what's behind the scenes, how they make decoders here on site, and all the people behind the product. So with that said, let's get started on our visit to Soundtracks right now. Hey guys, we're in Soundtracks, George. Hey, how's it going? Nice welcome. to see you. Yeah, great to see you. Thanks for coming to visit. Uh, we're happy to show you the uh, facility. Cool. Uh, this is a new building that we built for ourselves a few years ago. Um, we followed a lot of uh, environmental policies called LEED principles. Um, so we're, all of our lights are LEDs. We've got a lot of natural light windows and things like that. Uh, but one of the biggest things we wanted to do was to make sure that we had our manufacturing floor which is where we manufacture all of our electronics here in-house. So coming up the stairs, we're above the manufacturing floor. So we're gonna go take a look at that. Cool. Um, first off, if you wanna pan the area here, we're, we're still kind of in the process of getting things situated. I know we've been here a few years, but we, uh, we're eventually going to be building a layout here in this open area. And then back down the hall, you can kind of see where we've had our Soundtracks Academy and our dealer training classes. Okay. And uh, this year, we're actually looking at doing a webinar. Cool. So we'll be getting that set up uh, before too long. So um, upstairs is mostly the offices, the sales offices, the accounting offices, the engineering offices. Some of those things aren't necessarily as exciting. Yeah. So let's head downstairs and we'll show you the manufacturing floor first. All right. So let's go into the manufacturing floor. All right. Now, as you can see, we have our own set of machines, and this is where we build everything. Uh, even our, all of our aftermarket decoders, all of our factory installed decoders that we've done with our partners at Athern and Bachman and others that we've done, uh, all of them are built on these machines. So, uh, what do you say we get smocked up and right. uh, go take a look at it? Um, this is a clean room environment, and so all of our technicians are wearing a anti-static smock and special anti-static shoes. So what we'll have to do is get a smock, and we'll get uh, little booties on our shoes so we can go in and uh, take a look. All right, we're all suited up. Let's see what this is about. So now we're inside our clean room, and we've got all dressed and we're ready to go. So the first stage in a decoder's production life is the programming. This machine here uh, pre-flashes and pre-programs the sound ROMs and the memory chips. And what that does is it pre-flashes the processors with the software that the decoder runs, and it will also flash the memory chips with the sound files that the decoder will use during its operation. Now what we'll do is we'll take a tray of processors and we'll put it in there. We'll tell them how many of each flavor, if you will, that are needed to be made and then this will pre-program it. So our technicians more or less just watch it to make sure that it's running, and then once it's done, they'll mark the processors and the sound ROMs accordingly to make sure that once they're through the process, we know which ones are which. So the next step in the process is to populate the circuit board. So the circuit boards come like this. This is a TSU PNP raw panel, and this panel has, I don't remember how many are on there, 12 different decoders on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it through the machines and we're gonna put all the uh, components in place. So the first step is to put it into this machine. And this is a stencil printer. And basically what it's doing is it's taking solder paste, which is a soft tacky material, and spreading it onto the circuit board so that the components will hold in place where they're supposed to go. next step is to put all the components in place and this machine is the pick in place and what we do is we get reels of all the different components as you can see here they look like movie reels but it'll be resistors diodes capacitors all the stuff that's populated on the circuit board and this machine will take them off of that reel do a quick flash test and then put it on in place on the decoder so you can kind of see how the machine is running and it's populating this, putting all the parts on the decoder in place. So once 
the decoder has all the components on one side in place, then we take it and move it over to the oven. Our technician will take a quick visual look at it to make sure all the components are lined up properly and make sure everything looks the way it's supposed to be. Then they put it into this. This works just like a giant pizza oven. It will slowly run it through and heat up and melt the solder in place and then cool it off to make sure that all the solder joints are made. So now once the decoder is fully populated on both sides, we've got all the components on both sides, this is our TSU 2200 panel. Now we go into quality testing. What we're going to do is we're going to use this machine. It's called a flying probe tester. And as its name implies, it has a couple of sets of probes that will fly over the decoder and test the integrity of the circuit to make sure that you're getting a good decoder the first time. So let's fire this thing up. Let's close the door. First, it's checking camera alignment to make sure that all of the components are lined up and, and all the circuits that they're going to test are where they're supposed to be. So this is actually sending an electrical charge to each mm -hmm. area? Yeah, this is actually sending a small current and charge through the circuit as the engineers have specified to verify that every component is working the way it should. This is just one step that we've added to make sure that we're putting quality products and working products in the package the first time. So now, after the testing has been done with the flying probe, then we take the decoders and we cut them into individual, we break them off of, this, off of the panel. Then we go in and we do a hand test uh, by each of our technicians. Every single decoder is hand tested for functionality and verified and make sure one more step to make sure everything works the first time uh, when you open the package. So if you look over the shoulder here, what they've got is a special testing harness and a testing fixture. The small little circuit board there actually simulates a locomotive so it has lights, a motor, and a speaker on there so we can test and verify and they go through a specific process to make sure that the components are, and the decoders working the way it should. Once it's tested, it will be at a verification sticker on it. It'll say it passed the test and it'll get moved over and then it's ready for final assembly. If a problem is caught here, then again, our technicians will take it and fix the decoder up. Now each of our decoders have a specific test fixture. So depending on the type of decoder, they may have a specific test fixture. So each of these are all the different decoders that we manufacture here currently. Uh, this is all of the decoders for us and our friends at Athern, Bachman, and others that we've done decoders with. Okay. So the last stop is actually the final assembly station. And since they're still in the process of testing decoders, I don't have much going on here right now. But this is where they'll do final assembly. Plug in your harnesses, slide on the uh, shrink tubing, throw them in the packaging and staple the packaging, and get it ready for the stock room. So this is where all that happens. They also have a test station uh, build up. Uh, in here that if they, you know, when they do have to fix or repair a decoder, they have special soldering equipment to be able to do that, and then it goes back through the testing procedure. So here is Soundtrack's official greeter, Sadie. She's a golden retriever and uh, nine years old. So a happy birthday to you, Sadie. I don't know when that was, but this is Nancy Workman. She is Chief Operating Officer of Soundtracks. And uh, thanks for having us, Nancy. Sure. And uh, George is showing us around, so we appreciate that. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit of a history about Soundtracks and maybe how you guys started and where you, to where you are today. You know. Sure. Um, well, we, uh, we actually started the company on Cape Cod, of all places, Oh wow. and uh, my business partner and I were working together at a marine electronics company, mm -hmm. and uh, our offices just happened to be next door, and we became friendly, yeah. and uh, one day he came into my office and he said, hey, I've designed this product, I was wondering if you had some time to help me with some marketing, and I said, yeah, sure, what is it? Mm -hmm. He said, well, it's a sound system for model trains, and I went, 
<laughs> a sound system for toy trains. And he said, no, <laughs> scale model trains. And I said, what's the difference? I was not exposed to model trains at all when right. I was growing up. I knew no one with a model train. I had no uncles or friends or neighbors uh -huh. who had model trains, so I didn't know anything about it. And uh, he kind of huffed out of my office, and I figured that was the end of that. <laughs> but he came in the next yes. day, and he put a little HON3 brass Fujiyama K36 on my desk, and I said, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And that was sort of how we got started. Um, it was the year of the narrow gauge convention here in Durango in 1989, the year the roundhouse burned down actually. And uh, he invited me to come out to the convention and get to get to see what the hobby was all about. And uh, it, was, it was a pretty good uh, sales pitch because uh, I fell in love with the hobby and the people in the hobby are wonderful and the town. And, uh, so that's kind of how we got going. The cool. um, two products that were made first in Durango. Now we did for a little while manufacture product um, back in the early 1990s on Cape Cod, but it was using contract manufacturing. When we moved to Durango, we bought our first SMT line. And those are the boards, those two in the back um, are, are DSD uh, 150 and on the right, um, you see our Sierra sound system. Those were the first two boards manufactured here with our equipment in Durango. The little box underneath is a surround track system, also the first one of the first products made here in Durango. When you move down to the next shelf, um, it's the first product that we made with our new SMT line that we, we purchased here in Durango. You'll notice the difference between the size of that decoder and the size of the decoder above it. Um, as time has gone on, things have gotten smaller and more compact, and uh, we continue to do that. Um, and then the next shelf down continues with more boards, more board formats, and our, our Colorado Companies to Watch award that we received in uh, 2012. And uh, for anyone who's not familiar with that, and I would guess most viewers are not, um, every year uh, the state of Colorado, um, in cooperation with their um, development, um, uh, business development uh, efforts award um, 250 companies, there's a, a list of the 250 companies to watch and for the whole state and we were one of those companies in 2012 so it's kind of cool. Well James I want to introduce you to Josh Levine, oh, hey. he's our nice new full-time uh, tech support um, he started with us, what, a couple of months ago now, three months ago? February. February. Oh, man, how time flies, it seems like. But in all fairness, I mean, you've learned everything very quickly, and uh, it feels like you've been here for a very long time. So um, I'll let you guys talk for a little bit. All right, cool. So this is your repair center? This is this is our Blackstone repair shop. Uh -huh. We uh, we maintain our, our product as we do with the Soundtracks product. Um, so Blackstone locomotives can be sent back in for service work, repair work, uh, and you know, uh, it varies from decoder repair to running gear repair, cosmetic repairs if there's been an unfortunate meeting with the locomotive in the floor. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So speaking of repairs and tech support in general, I noticed that you guys have your own dedicated uh, phone support and email support for tech problems we we cover we we we're very proud of our support here we uh we staff our support center monday through friday nine to five uh, thirty um phone email if you haven't heard back from us in a couple hours we're probably just under a heavy phone load we've got about a 90 percent return rate the same day cool. for for phones and email which yeah, we're very good. proud of um, one to two situation. day turnaround on decoder repair from the time we receive them till they're headed back out the door if, if it's something that we can't resolve over the phone cool where we need the product sent back for for repair all right well that's sounds like a strong point to me made in the usa quick repair time and quick turnaround time to the companies that uh, the model manufacturers that you guys produce for yes 
And with Josh, I'll just say, add this in really quickly, is with Josh, um, when he's tied up, I also help out a little bit with the tech support. So if he's tied up on another line, the phone will ring to my phone, and if I'm unavailable, then that's when you get the voicemail cool. messages and stuff like that. But um, that's one thing we want to make sure. We want to make sure our customers are enjoying the product. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what this is all about. It's all about fun. It's all about making a enjoyable experience. Mm -hmm. And nothing's worse than when you have problems. And so that's why we make sure that we have people here that can answer your questions to make sure that you're getting the most out of your deliveries. Yeah. Well, George, thanks for the tour, but what, why'd you take me out back? Well, we took you out back. This is our little vacation away from the office, kind of. A uh, little back patio here. Uh, we've got ourselves a little grill over there and a nice view. Let's go get some dogs on the grill. All right. Well, thanks, George, for showing us around the soundtracks. Hey, always glad to have you. Yeah, it's been great and uh, good to see behind the scenes what you guys do. Thanks, guys. That wraps it up here from Durango, Colorado. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to do the Durango at Silverton, but I'll probably be back to Pastor George in a year or two and take that scenic trip uh, on the Durango at Silverton. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time right here on my channel. Take care.